it is Halloween weekend here in New York City. Children are trick-or-treating, revelers are drunkenly screaming in the streets, and car horns are blaring. And we are here at the Lara Voltaire shooting, Gothic Homemaking Presents, a series of short featurettes meant to entertain you in between full episodes of Gothic Homemaking. Halloween is my favorite time of the year, as it's probably yours as well, because it's the time when a Gothic homemaker such as myself or like yourself can go into just about any store and find macabre home furnishings that you can display in your lair year round. Now, it was in one of the episodes of Gothic Homemaking, I think it might have been episode seven, where I talk about the difference between Halloween and high design. I try to walk a line so as not to buy Halloween decorations that make my apartment look like a ride at an amusement park. I do want to keep the place kind of elegant, and so to that end, I went to Michael's, the arts and crafts store. Over the years, this store has offered some Halloween items that were elegant enough to display all year long. So I was really excited when I got there. But where were they? Seven days before Halloween, they were already in a discount bin at the front of the store. All I found were these sad tombstones and this sign, enter if you dare not find any Halloween items. I thought I'd be able to go to a place like Michael's a day or two after Halloween and still be able to get a bunch of things and get them at a severe discount. But instead, seven whole days before Halloween, they were cleared out of all of the best items. Luckily for me, I had been there a couple of weeks ago and I bought this skull decanter. I also bought this lace web tablecloth. I also bought these black metal serving trays. They've got a spider in the center and skulls around the sides. I would definitely call this more Halloween than high design, but we do a lot of tea parties here at the Lair Voltaire, and I think this will come in handy. All in all, here's my Michael's haul. I should warn you, the skull decanter does leak. It's a slow leak, and I don't mind putting a little bowl in front of it so that nothing underneath it gets wet. The spider web tablecloth is remarkably nice. I hung it in the hallway. I just wish I could remember that it was there because I keep running into it. Next, I was off to Kmart. I give Kmart a really a really hard time. I call them came apart. I did not expect that I'd find really high design items at Kmart, but one of the viewers of Gothic Homemaking suggested I go. Well, I wasn't surprised when I arrived there to find schlocky Halloween items such as these. But then I turned a corner. It appears that Kmart has joined Michaels and some of the other stores in creating a line of really quite nicely designed Halloween items. I found these crow salt and pepper shakers you could use year round. And apparently these items are all designed by Jacqueline Smith. <laughs> I remember her as a child, she was one of Charlie's angels. This crow that I found is amongst one of the better ones that I've seen in my travels. I would totally buy this welcome mat if I had, you know, a house. And while no part of my kitchen is big enough for this kitchen floor mat, I think I've got a use for it. Speaking of the kitchen, someday I will renovate it, and when I do, I'm gonna want jars like these and kitchen towels like these. I also picked up these beautiful Raven kitchen towels. And here is my Kmart haul. Apothecary jars, some beautiful kitchen towels, and that kitchen floor mat is the perfect size to be a placemat for my mystical vanishing chest and summoning table. Next, it was off to Target. I had heard they had a really cool line this year called the Nocturne Collection as part of their Hide and Eek Boutique. Well, needless to say, I was very excited to get there, but just like Michael's, all of the good stuff was gone. All that was left were some velvet pumpkins and a couple of wall hangings like this one. They did have some party plates though, so I picked up these skull plates, again, for one of our little tea parties at the lair. Pretty disappointing, but then it hit me. Maybe I could buy some of the items I missed out on from their website. Sure enough, all of their amazing Halloween offerings were available on their website. I ended up buying this Halloween coffin candy dish and their signature piece, this Halloween beverage dispenser. And here is my Target Halloween haul. I have to tell you, this Halloween beverage dispenser is outrageous. I expect it to be really flimsy, but it's actually really solid. At first I thought these parts were metal, but I believe they're resin. The glass has a beautiful pearlescent look to it. This yellow part is gonna have to be painted black. And it lights up green. 
The coffin shaped candy dish was a bit of a disappointment. I thought it was glass, but it's actually very, very thin pieces of pretty flimsy plastic. Or maybe we can just put it up on the wall on a shelf where people can't touch it because it looks pretty great. And it is purple, and we're going to be talking about the purple color scheme that we've been working on here in the lair in a future episode. I also got these apothecary jars from Target. The shapes are really quite nice, but I kind of wish the labels were a little bit more antiquated. These are a little modern for my style. Maybe I'll add my own labels to it later on. Now, if you told me that I was going to find my favorite Halloween items of this year at Pottery Barn, I don't think I would have believed you, but that's exactly what happened. I had done a search for skeleton wine glasses, and the internet told me there were some at Pottery Barn. Almost instantly when I walked in, I found a display with three different types of skeleton glasses. I bought all three types and this skull decanter, as you can see from this image I posted on my Instagram page. I also picked up these skeletal hand champagne flutes for when I'm celebrating the death of an enemy. Good riddance to bad rubbish. There were other amazing items there, including these skeleton salad tossers, which I just had to have. I also bought this metal skeleton holding two glass bowls. And now I have a place to put my change when I walk into the lair of Voltaire. Now, this Halloween season, I saw a lot of cushions out there, like these cushions that I saw at Burlington Coat Factory. But most of the cushions I saw were very Halloween specific. They were very Halloween-y, not very high design. They'd be a little silly to display in the lair all year long. But I couldn't resist this one from Pottery Barn. And that is my epic Pottery Barn haul. As always, Halloween proved an incredibly amazing time to find all of the spookiest things for the lair that can be enjoyed year round. Uh, I did learn a very valuable lesson this year and that is do not wait until Halloween or even worse the day after Halloween looking for great bargains because as you saw all of the best things were gone a solid week before Halloween. Now maybe this means Halloween is more popular than ever and if that's true that bodes very well for spooky kids like you and me. But you know, you don't have to wait until Halloween to find great macabre items to decorate your lair with. I show them all of the time on Gothic Homemaking. I travel the world and show you all of the coolest, most exotic Gothic things that you can bring into your lair. And I also show you how to make quite a lot of them as well. So until the next episode of Gothic Homemaking, I wish you good luck and a safe and amazing Halloween. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and also subscribe to the channel so you'll know when the next full episode of Gothic Homemaking airs. It stars the amazing Riri Phillips from Australia, along with yours truly, or as she calls me, some wanker.